Yes, it's wake up time. Hey, y'all, wake up. And politics. Holy. It's Latin for many. Sick. Now suck your blood. Now suck politics. Your blood. Politics. We're going to start it off here with a little Boris news. Mm. Very popular guy. Everyone loves Boris. He uh, is more loved after having to resign than he ever was as you know, prime minister. It's a weird thing that happens when, uh, when you don't have something anymore. You long for it. It's a mm -hmm. weird, weird phenomenon yeah. that we have. The Telegraph here. You don't know what you got until it's gone. Yep. The Telegraph here. Boris Johnson tipped to become next Secretary General of NATO. Whoa! Can you imagine All Boris? the options. The dude's got options. Yeah. Uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine. <laughs> now, something about NATO. Boris Johnson is being backed by senior Tories to be the next Secretary General of NATO when the high-profile role becomes, uh, or next becomes free. The Prime Minister... Oh, interesting. They say the... Are you a Prime Minister for life, even if you resign? Are you, like, Well, I that think it's title? like President. No, it's like say. President. Okay, you know, so it's President Trump. The title, right, it's, right. Yeah. The Prime Minister is being touted as a candidate to fill the key defense post with the incumbent of Jen Stoltenberg, widely accepted to stand down in September next year. Mr. Johnson is uh, is the latest British politician to be tipped for the role after Ben Wallace, the defense secretary. Ben Wallace, is that the defensive mm. player of the year for the Detroit Pistons in 2004? The defense secretary and Theresa May. <laughs> Theresa is an obscure early, early aughts NBA reference. I'm sorry. Did you look that up or did you just have it uh, locked no, I just and had loaded? It I had brain. it in my head. The Lakers oh lost gosh. to the Detroit Pistons in 2004, and there was a guy named Ben oh, Wallace that, that that took out Shaq. You know Shaq, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. He played. He played. I played Shaq. Think anyway, of, think of all the other things you could hold in your brain, but instead you've got some obscure player from 2004. Yeah, I'm sure somebody in the chat will know who, who I'm talking about. Have you ever heard of uh, Barry Bonds? <laughs> The timing of the role would allow Mr. Johnson some time to recharge his batteries after he stands down as Prime Minister on September 6th. He would need to quit as an MP to take up the role. When was this article written? July 26th. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I am remembering that it is weird. Uh, no, MP is different from... Yeah, okay. Prime Minister... So. Yeah, you you like an MP is just like a high ranking person in 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 the party. I think mm, okay. I don't know, man. Yeah, UK, UK politics, politics is, weird. is uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm gonna look up what an MP is. Yeah, American politics works. isn't much better, but uh, the a British candidate has long been tipped for the role because of U.S. distrust around any European Union figures taking the job, given repeated suggestions of plans for a new EU army. Um, oh. Baby's getting little. Uh, Britain is also trusted by the Baltic states, and Mr. Johnson personally has won international credit for helping to build the international coalition against Russia's Vladimir Putin. Richard Drax, MP, a senior conservative member of the Defense Select Committee, said he would support the prime minister for the role if he wanted it. Mr. Drax told The Telegraph, quote, any distinguished Brit would be a great choice. If indeed that is what Boris Johnson wants to go and do, of course, I would support that. End quote. Uh, Mark Fre MP. Yeah. I'm really glad I looked this up. Yeah, yeah, because there's a bunch of these MPs being quoted here. But we always see MP and we have no idea what it means. It just means member of parliament. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes so sense. So you're individual elected to serve in the House of Commons of the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so Marc Francois, MP, another member of the Defense Committee, added, quote, People will probably argue over Boris Johnson's legacy for years, but one thing which is clearly inarguable is his absolutely staunch support for Ukraine in the face of Russian barbarity. Mm. If he Indeed, were to, yeah. and that is why, isn't it? Yeah. If he were to apply to become the Secretary General of NATO, I suspect he could rely on President Zelensky for a reference. So there mm -hmm. it is. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the whole Ukraine thing might have been like a warm-up to the NATO thing, you know? Well, it's kind of like United States politics, where, you know, if you do what you're told by mm -hmm. whoever's telling you to do it, it's not that you get your reward while you're in office. It's when you get out of office, suddenly you get to be a, 
you know, you get paid a half a million dollars to speak at a conference for Boeing, mm-hmm. or you get, you know, you're rewarded in other ways when you're out of office. <laughs> um, so he did what he was told in regards to Ukraine, and now he gets his his uh, treat. I like uh, Brother G's comment in the, the chat here. Ben Wallace, Big Ben equals Big Ben Parliament equals Boris equals NATO equals Illuminati confirmed. Good logic there. Yeah, that sounds right. David Jones, the former Brexit minister, added, quote, Boris has actually led the Western response to Putin. It was Boris who went to Sweden and Finland and urged the leaders of both countries to make applications for NATO membership, which, of course, they did. Ah, that's why he convinced the Swedes and the the Finnish, to join NATO, or at least apply. However, there was concern among the top brass, with Lord Dannett, former head of the British Army, saying that he could not support Mr. Johnson because of his character. The peer told The Telegraph, quote, Undoubtedly, he has done a lot of good things, and our full square support for Ukraine is fantastic. But I'm afraid it is the personal stuff, the lack of integrity, the lack of trust. Frankly, we don't want to expose Boris Johnson to the international stage for more ridicule. He's a national mm. embarrassment, end quote. Wow. That's a good words. reason. Yeah. A senior Ministry of Defense figure also know. expressed doubts given there was a likelihood that Emmanuel Macron, the French president, would veto him. And that leads us to, uh, I'm not going to read it, but there was a, another article from GBNews.UK. It's great, great Britain news. And that, the headline, Emmanuel Macron could use veto to stop Boris Johnson becoming NATO Secretary General. And... Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. Do you, this, this is like uh, is this uh, Macron trying to, you know, be the guy instead of Boris? Are they going up against each other maybe for some popularity contest to become NATO's next head person? I'm not really aware of why Macron would do that. Or do they have some sort of rivalry? I mean, I know France and England historically are just like forever rivals. Mm-hmm. Would he do it just because? Just because of that, I don't, I don't, I'm not really familiar with the situation. Yeah, let me see if there's anything uh, of note in this article here. A senior Ministry of Defense source told The Telegraph, the reality is that NATO sec gens are appointed by a unanimous decision. Any country can veto. Quote, do you think President Macron would nominate Boris Johnson to become the uh, sec gen of NATO? Question mark. It is the challenge for a Brit. Full stop. You need the United States to support you and the French to say yes. So maybe the maybe the French do have some more influence on oh, yeah. what happens to NATO. Uh, they have NATO. Uh, NATO. They have veto power. They're one well, of every the, country seems to have it though. No, I, there's no? five of them. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's there's five countries that have veto power. Um, France is one of them. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. There's just a uh, yeah tapping into the maybe the the tensions there and saying maybe Macron mm-hmm. will step in the way of Boris and his desire to become the NATO head. But you know, point being. Everyone loves Boris. He's a great, he's Somehow. a free agent. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll see where he lands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I think it's very, I never would have thought that this happened. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I they, thought he they was made dumb. Fun he's going to, so much. yeah, sail off into the sunset, you know, go, go drink. And, and to sort of <laughs> go to the bars. have to resign in the nature that he did. Uh, it was like a no, like just nobody, they were like, we just, we don't like you go away. And he was like, okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. He just, he just resigned. It was the weirdest How's thing. That? Okay. Um, How's that? Maybe that's, maybe that's my American sensibilities. You know, American politicians never resign. They could be kind of like what Trump said. They can shoot someone in the street. <laughs> <laughs> and they will fight it to the end and never and not resign. Yeah. Uh, even when they're impeached, they don't go away. Right. 